Hi, I am Ram Gopal from presentationprocess.com. Are you new to PowerPoint? Are you overwhelmed by all these tools and buttons in the software? Do you need to create your PowerPoint slides in the next one hour but you don't know how? You have come to the right place. PowerPoint is a sophisticated program with tons of tools but you don't need to know all of those tools and functionality to create your next presentation. You just need to know 5% of PowerPoint to create an impactful presentation. In this video, I'll teach you that 5% so you can create your next presentation without any trouble. So let us jump right in and learn PowerPoint. By the way, for your convenience, we have added chapters to this video. You just need to place your cursor along the timeline of this YouTube video to find exactly what you want to learn. All right, now the first question, how do you open PowerPoint? It's fairly simple. You go to the bottom left corner of your screen and click on the start button and then start typing PowerPoint. Even before you can finish typing the entire word, you will get this option for PowerPoint app. You click on that option and PowerPoint opens up. By the way, I'm using Microsoft 365 for this video, but what I'm going to teach you will apply even if you have PowerPoint 2007 version. Now, as soon as you open PowerPoint, you will get a screen like this or you will get a screen like this for a new presentation. No matter which version of PowerPoint you use, you will have three options here. One is the option to start a blank presentation. Second is the option to choose your design with the design themes. And third, the option to choose your templates. First, let me talk about the templates. Let us say you want to make a business pitch presentation. You go to the option here and say business pitch and then hit enter and see what PowerPoint comes up with. As you can see, PowerPoint gives you a few options. If you like any particular option, like say this one, you click on it and that will open up this dialog box. Here you can read the description and if you like it, you hit create. That downloads the template for you. You just need to replace this sample text with your own text and your presentation gets ready. Even if the content is not an exact match for your needs, you can always tweak the content to create your presentations. I firmly believe that using templates is always a big time saver. Let me close this. If your presentation is not one of the standard types for which you can pick up a template and modify, you have two options. One is to click on the blank presentation or the second which is to click on one of these design themes that allows you to start with an interesting looking slide deck. For this tutorial, I am going to start with a simple blank presentation. Now that we have opened up PowerPoint, I'll do two things immediately. The first thing I'll do is to pin this program onto the taskbar. Now, what do I mean by that? The next time you want to start the program, you don't really have to go here, type PowerPoint and then open the app. All you need to do is to go down to this bar called as the taskbar right click on the PowerPoint icon and you have this option called pin to taskbar. You click on it. Now PowerPoint rests on the taskbar. So the next time you want to open it, you just need to click on this and PowerPoint opens up. Now with that out of the way, the next thing I will do is to save the presentation. I've seen so many cases where the presenter has done so much work on creating a presentation and leaves it unsaved and accidentally closes the file to lose all the work. I don't want you to suffer from that, so develop the habit of saving your presentation right off the gate. So how do you save the presentation? You take your cursor to the top left corner and click on File, and then click on this option called Save As, and then choose the location where you want to save your presentation. In this case, I want to save it on the desktop, so I'm going to click on that option. Give this a memorable name. I'm going to call this PowerPoint Basics. And you can see that the file type is .pptx. That is exactly the format we want. You just hit save. Now, when I go to the taskbar, right click and go to show the desktop option, I can see my presentation here called PowerPoint Basics. So the next time I want to open and access the file, I just need to double click on the icon and that opens up that specific file. Excellent. The second task is done. Now the third task. Now that you've come this far, it is important for you to know a few terminologies 
that will allow you to search for information from either the help or from Google and you'll be able to make sense of the instructions. So let us learn the basic terminology of PowerPoint. The large panel that you see here on your screen is called as the slide area. Then the panel that you see on the left is called as the thumbnail area. Then the most important area on your screen is this area called as PowerPoint ribbon. The ribbon is made of a collection of tabs that look like this. You click a tab to access a collection of tools called as group. So to summarize, PowerPoint has a number of tools. The tools related to a specific task are clubbed together as a group and a collection of groups is called a tab and a collection of tab is found in a ribbon. The strip that you see at the bottom which has a few commands is called as the status bar. Excellent. That is as much terminology that you need to know. The next thing I'm going to do is to start creating the slide. PowerPoint has made it extremely easy for a beginner to start creating the slides. You just need to do what PowerPoint says. Here it says click to add title. So I'm going to click on it and I'm going to write the title of this presentation. In this case, it will be called PowerPoint Basics. Now I can see that I have made some mistake here. I can always right click on this and click on the right option just as it works with any of the other software programs that you are familiar with. I can click on this to add subtitle. Maybe I can write my name here. This is the name of the presenter. Now I've got my first slide ready. But then this slide looks so plain that you don't want to present this slide to anyone. So let us see how we can quickly improve the design of this slide. All you need to do for that is go to this tab here called as design and here you have the option called themes. Themes allow you to add professional design to your slides quickly. Now observe what happens when I take my cursor over these design theme options. Let me place my cursor here. You can instantly see the result in this live preview. As I move my cursor to the next option, you can see the design applied instantaneously. Now you're not restricted only to these options. You can click on the drop down menu here and that opens up even more options for you to add design to your slides. If you like any particular option like say this one, you can click on it and instantly your slide looks far more professional. Once you select a design theme, you will see these options called as variants. These are the variations of the design theme you chose. For example, instead of this orange color, if you want blue color, you can choose this green color, you can choose or purple color, you can choose. Let me choose this blue color and I'm well on my way to impress my audience with my slide deck. Next, I want to add a new slide to write my content. How do I do that? I can go to the thumbnail view click on that and hit enter and I have my new slide available. If you want a more traditional way, you can go to the home tab and here you have the option called new slide. Now that brings me to the next option I want you to notice. Here you can see in certain buttons, you have the icon available and you have the drop down menu available related to that icon. When you click on that option, when you see here for new slide, we have this drop down menu available you can choose any of these layouts for your next slide. So whenever you choose a tool, see if that tool has this small downward arrow available next to it. If it has, then you can click on that option and you will have the drop down menu available. By the way, you can expand certain groups to find more options. For example, let me click on this and you can see in this group, we have this arrow available. When I click on that option, you can see that we have these floating dialog boxes open up that give us even more options. Now, let us not get confused with all those options right now. All I want you to remember is whenever you choose a tool, always try to see if you can expand the options so you can choose the exact tool that you want. Excellent. Now, let us come back to creating our slides. Here, I want to write the topics that I'm going to discuss in this presentation. So I'm going to click on the title, let us say topics, and then I'm going to add my options here. The first option is I'm going to talk about the home tab, hit enter, and then I'm going to talk about the design tab, hit enter, and I'm going to talk about animations, hit enter, and I'm going to talk about transitions. 
So these are the topics that I'm going to discuss in this presentation. Now what you've done is you've created one of the classic slide types in any presentation. You've created a bullet point slide. A typical bullet point slide lists items like this. But then the problem is these bullet point slides are usually quite boring. Is there a way you can make your slides look a lot more appealing than these bullet point slides? Yes, you can. Let me show you how. We have a beautiful option in PowerPoint called as Smart Art Diagrams. Let me show you how easy it is for you to convert this boring looking slide into a visual slide. You select all these bullet points by clicking and dragging your cursor across. Then right click and go to the option called Convert to Smart Art. And here you can see that we have a whole bunch of options available. Let me choose the first one. Now my slide already looks a lot better. Another way for you to visualize your slides is to insert pictures. Let me show you how that is done. Let me hit enter by going to the thumbnail view. Let us write types of fruits, which happens to be the title. Now, the next thing I want to get rid of is this placeholder. So I'm going to change the layout. I can right click on any blank area of the slide, go to this option called layout and I can choose a different layout. Now we are on this title and content layout. I can have this option called title only layout. And now I have the space available for me to visualize my information. The first option we have is apples. So I need to insert the picture of apples. How do you do that? You go to the tab here called insert. And here we have the option called pictures. You click on the drop down menu as I told you before, and you can choose to insert pictures from any of these three options. One is this device. That is, if you have already downloaded the picture of apples, then you can click on this option. If you have Office 365 subscription, you have this option called stock images. If you are on an earlier version of PowerPoint, you will have this option called online pictures. You click on online pictures. Here in the dialog box that opens up, you can search for what you want. In this case, I want to search for apples. Let me write that and hit enter. And Bing searches for the various images you can use on your slides. I like this option. So I'm going to click on that and let me say insert. Now I will have the picture of apples on my slide. I can click on this picture, hold the shift button down. As I click and drag one of these handles in the corner, and I can resize the image and I can place it over here. Now I need to label this. So let me go to insert again and you will find this option here called as text box. You click on that and then you click on the slide and you will get the text box option. You start typing your label. In this case, it is apples. You select that. Now you go to the option here called font. And if you want to change the font type, you can click on the drop down menu here and you can choose any of these options. I'm quite okay with the current font. Next, if you want to increase the size of this label, you can use this option here where A is written in a bigger font. Let me click on that a couple of times. Now, as I click on this, you can see that the font size increases and it reflects here on the slide. Let me now place this over here and I have my label written for my first picture. Let me do that again very quickly. I want to insert the picture of oranges, which happens to be the next option. So let me go to the slide, go to insert, go to pictures, go to online pictures, and let me search for oranges, hit enter. And I have various pictures of oranges available. I like this one. You insert, you select the picture, hold the shift button down, click and drag from the corner so you can resize it nicely and then place it right next to the previous one. Now, if I want to save some time, I can copy this text box by selecting the text box, right clicking and choosing this option called copy, then right click on the slide and choose this option called paste. And now I can place this label over here, right under the next picture. And I can call this oranges. And now I have my second picture labeled. Now take a look at how this slide looks compared to the earlier one. And that is the reason why it is always preferable to add pictures and visuals to make your slides come to life. Now to summarize whatever we have learned so far, we learned how to open a PowerPoint. We learned how to save it. We learned about the terminology. 
We learned how to create a slide by clicking and writing our text. We learned how to insert a new slide. We learned how to convert the basic bullet point into a simple diagram. We also learned how to visualize our information by inserting pictures and the corresponding labels. The next thing you want to know is how to present your slides. To present your slides, you need to choose an option called Slideshow. For that, you need to take your cursor down to the status bar and you will see these icons available here. Let us quickly understand what these icons represent. The one that you see here which is clicked by default is called as the normal view. The option next to it is called as slide sorter view. When you click on it, you can see all the slides in one glance. The one that you see right next to it is called as the reading view. I don't usually use it much. To come out of this view, you can hit escape. The option that we would use to present our slide is this one called as slideshow. You select your first slide and then you click on this option called slideshow and you would be able to present your slides. This is our first slide. To advance to the next slide, you can choose any of the options like you can hit your enter button on the keyboard or you can hit your space bar or you can use up and down arrow keys on your keyboard or you can hit page up and page down on your keyboard whatever is convenient to you you can use let me use the simplest option which is to hit enter that takes me to the next slide to go back to the previous slide i can hit page up and that takes me to one slide back so let me hit enter here is the second slide the next slide and the next slide now you know how to create a basic bullet point slide you know how to convert that into a simple diagram using SmartArt. You also know how to visualize your slide using pictures and the labels. At this point, you know more about PowerPoint than most people. Now, to come out of this slideshow, you hit escape. Now, to go to a specific slide, you double click on the slide and that takes you to the normal view. Now, let us take our skill to the next level. We are going to add simple animation to our slides so that we can hold the audience's attention. Here on this slide, we have four elements. That is two pictures and two texts. So let us add a simple animation to reveal one item at a time. To add animation, all you need to do is to click on the object that you want to animate. Go to the animations tab. Then you use a simple animation called fade animation. As a beginner, I don't want you to use any of these other options that can be quite exciting. Just stick with the basic simple fade animation. So we have got our first animation in place. Right after showing the picture, we are going to show the label. So let me click on the second object I want to animate and hit fade. Then I click on the next object and hit fade. Then the next object and then hit fade. And then when I go to slideshow by going to this option here, you can see that I can present these objects on a click. On the first click, I show the picture of apples. And then on the next click, I show the corresponding label. Then on the next click, I show the picture of oranges. Then the corresponding labels. Can you see here, you can present your information at your own pace. And you can hold the audience's attention with simple animation. As I said earlier, if you want to come out of the slideshow mode, you hit the escape button on your keyboard. Now as the last step to add polish to our slide deck, we are going to add transitions so the movement from one slide to the next happens a bit more dramatically. So let us go to the first slide, then go to the transitions tab, then choose from any of these transition options. A simple transition that works well in any business setup is wipe transition. You can click on that option. You can see that this is the preview of the wipe transition. Once you select the transition, you go to this option here called apply to all. That applies the transition to all the slides in your deck. So there is consistency in the way the slides move. Now with the first slide selected, let us go to slideshow. And here we have the first slide shown. Now with a click, see how the second slide is shown with a nice transition. By just adding a simple transition, you can add so much professionalism in the way your slide deck looks and feels. That's it. Now with this much knowledge, you can create your basic slide deck and impress your audience. Always remember to go to file and keep hitting the save option so that you can save your work. If at any point you feel you need to up your PowerPoint game and get a strong foundation in the program, 
then I highly recommend that you join our complete PowerPoint foundation course. This is a 13 and a half hour course with step by step video tutorials that teach you all that you need to know about PowerPoint foundation. The course is priced affordably and you get lifetime access to this program with one time payment. The link to this course is available in the description box below the video. You click on the link and check out more details about this program and take your PowerPoint skills to the next level. Finally, if you want to join our 25 creative ideas free PowerPoint mini training, you can click on the link here. To watch our latest video on PowerPoint in presentation process channel, you can click on the link here. If you like this video, please give this video a like, share it with your friends and hit the subscribe button to enjoy more such videos. Thanks a lot for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.